As I asked the children just a few minutes ago, what is Christmas about? If someone were to ask you later on today, what do you do for Christmas? What, what is Christmas all about? What would you say? In our culture, we would probably first think of presents. Christmas is a time where we buy each other gifts. We go to the store. It can be a time that's very hectic. Maybe on the good side of our culture, we'd say Christmas is a time to be with family, to, to, to relax. Maybe our more uh, cynical side would say it's a time to try to be happy when it's cold and, and nasty outside. Or at least a day when we can get away from work or not go to school. There are many things that we do at Christmas. Christmas is about a lot of things, but there's one thing that is the most important. There's one thing that is the core of what Christmas is about. What Christmas is about is what we heard in our gospel from John. John told us, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. It's a simple enough sentence, but enough there to ponder for, for eternity. But ponder with me just a moment. John tells us that the, the, the word became flesh. Now, just what is this word? This word that John is talking about is not just what we say in our daily conversations, but it is a being, it is a person that John describes. John begins his gospel, much like the book of Genesis, which is familiar to many of us, when he told us that, that in the beginning this word was with God, and this word was God in the beginning. In other words, John says in, in many different ways that what the word Sorry, what God is, the word is. Both of them are equal. And it is this word that John tells us is the word through whom all things were made. On those days of creation, we might think of in Genesis, when we hear the words in the beginning, this is that word. That word when God said, let there be light. And there was light. This is that word. And as the writer to the Hebrews tells us, this is the word that was proclaimed through the prophets, prophets like Isaiah, whom we heard. This is the word of God, not just the word of man. And think about this for a minute. Just what is a word anyway? You don't have to be a linguist to know that a, a word is a way that we give a voice, an expression to, to what we think about. There are things hidden in our mind. There are thoughts that we have. There's feelings and emotions. And what do words do? Words give us a way to express that. Words give us a way to reveal our thoughts. There are many words we use. There are many languages all around the world. But all of us use words to reveal what is hidden. Words so we can express the unexpressible, you might say. Well, John highlights for us that Jesus is this word, this word that became flesh. He ended our reading telling us, No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with God has made him known. You see, Jesus, the word, has made the hidden God known to us. If someone asks you, what is God like? Who is God? As Christians, we have an answer, don't we? We have Jesus. As the writer to the Hebrews tells us, Jesus is the exact representation of God's being. And he says it in many, many different ways. 
Literally, he says Jesus is the icon. Jesus is that seen image of the unseen father. Christmas is about when God was made known in the flesh. Not simply through words, but in the flesh. I say all this about words because it is impossible to overemphasize the mystery and the wonder of how it is that God became flesh. The unchangeable Yahweh of the Old Testament changed and became an infant. This this God Almighty, El Shaddai, we read about, became a, a newborn. The one who is eternal and timeless entered our our time. All of this happened in the miracle that we call the virgin birth at Christmas. For our Christmas Eve service, we focused on one of God's most famous names for, at Christmas, uh, Emmanuel, which means with us, God, the with us, God. And this is the truth of Christmas that we keep with us today, that God is with us. As the writer, as John told us, Jesus came full of grace and truth. When Jesus came from the Father, he didn't come to establish a new type of religion or a new type of philosophy or to give us a certain method to live by or to to give us more rules or anything like this, right? When you look at what Jesus did, you actually see that, just as John says, he came full of grace and truth. We're about to begin the new year in our secular calendar, and we're also going to begin following the life of Christ in our church calendar. And something that we're going to see in the next several months is we're going to see our Savior who became this newborn at Christmas. We're going to see him grow. We're going to see this word become flesh, give that grace and truth and make God known. We're going to see how Jesus used his, his brain and he, he learned his alphabet, or maybe his alphabet, studied the scriptures, grew in this wisdom and knowledge, how Jesus preached and teach and spent long days feeding the sick, visiting, visiting those in prison, even taking naps. Jesus was proclaiming the kingdom of God. We're going to watch this grace and truth come. And in the end, we're going to see that our Lord used his flesh, his body, and he's going to take it up to a mountain in Jerusalem, near where he was born, to show us our salvation on that cross. In short, you might say that we're going to watch our Lord, our God in the flesh, live as our Savior, die as our substitute, and rise as our conquering Lord. And after that, he will, he will pour out his Holy Spirit on all people, and he will give us the faith that we have. Now, to be sure, it is a mystery and a wonder, and we could go on for, for days much longer talking about how it is that this infinite God became a man, our Emmanuel. But does it seem often in, in, in this holiday season when we're all supposed to be happy that our Emmanuel, Emmanuel, is not with us? Maybe bills are adding up or things are just so hectic that, that, that we just miss the moments. Does Jesus maybe not seem to be with us when grandma is is still suffering in the hospital and and, and plans that we make just didn't turn out the way that we wanted them to? Maybe we feel that having God with us should mean having a stress-free life or having instant questions, sorry, instant answers to every question that someone asks us. Does it seem that God is not with us when, it, when, when, when children at home are, are acting up at just the simplest chores? We have, we have arguments within our family. 
where is God at those times? Is God with us? Where do you find him? Today, John shows us that answer in its simplest and most beautiful form. He tells us it's in the word. Jesus is with us in this divine word. Do you want to know what God is like? Then learn about him. Read about him in his word, in the Bible. I mean, first of all, many of us and many others who are following us are going to read through the Bible this year and our Bible reading plan for, for 2016. We're going to get to know what God is like, what he has done for us, what he has to, to, to say for our lives. When we come together as Christians, as people who believe and, and, and trust this word, we give each other encouragement. When we gather together for worship and we hear Jesus' words of forgiveness, he picks us up when we fall. When we might doubt whether or not we are children of God, whether or not that we, we have this inheritance waiting for us, God points all of us to our baptism. Our baptism is that moment when water and God's powerful word came together and washed our sins away. Our baptism is an unconditional contract that God made with us, that we can always stick to him to say, we are forgiven. We are his children. We have an inheritance. In a little while, we're going to gather to eat and drink Jesus' body and blood, and he is going to give us forgiveness, a presence that we can touch and, and, and we can feel as we remember what he has done. When we want to find God's word, we, we, can, we can meditate, perhaps as good Lutherans, on the small catechism. Things like the Apostles' Creed, the, the, the Ten Commandments, and the Lord's Prayer. We can know that when we pray to God, Jesus is there interceding for us, giving, giving us everything we need for our salvation. I mean, what a blessing it is to know that in God's word, he gives us everything. He says that we are thoroughly equipped for every single good work. There's nothing that is hidden that we need to know besides what God has revealed in his word for our salvation. God has equipped us and he calls us to, as we say, to come into his presence and to worship him. And he will be with us in that word. It's not always going to be easy. Like I said, it's not always going to be simple. But God will be with us. Our Emmanuel, our God who earned our salvation on this earth still comes to our flesh through his word today. And that is a promise that we can take with us into this new year and into this holiday season. As many of us now are away visiting family or when family comes to visit us, one thing we can know from Christmas is that God is with us. Our God came to us in his flesh. We have his word that we can read and we can reason and we can discuss. And that is a blessing that keeps on giving year after year. So in this Christmas season, as, as the hectic times perhaps come back and, and, and we get ready to go back to work, when we get done with our vacations, let's hold God to his promises, his promises to be with us through his word. Amen.